Does the stock market really care about Obamacare one way or the other? Ultimately, yes, in, in more short term. I mean, the stocks do reflect a lot of uncertainty about what's actually going to happen with Obamacare. And let's face it, anyone who says or tries to predict what's going to happen um, probably doesn't really know what they're talking does, about real well. We don't know if the law will be upheld. We don't know if only part of it will be upheld. We don't even know if this time next year will even exist. Right. By relative, by terms of valuation, relatively speaking, healthcare stocks still are, I hate to use the word cheap, so I won't, uh, relatively inexpensive. You could still buy lots of healthcare stocks, like an Eli Lilly, mm -hmm. uh, Pfizer, Merck. Those are still going to give you dividend yields anywhere from three to over, probably close to 5% nowadays, even after the stock market has run up. Why don't investors pick up more health care stocks? Is it the uncertainty? I think some of it's the uncertainty with what's going to happen with Obamacare. Um, to be sure, it's also um, a presidential election year, and health care stocks typically don't perform well um, during times of, during election years. Um, and with the drug makers in particular, this, the question still remembers what's on the other side of the patent cliff for them, um, what has been so attractive for so many of them, have been the dividend yields, and then it's, you know, what drug makers are going to get new, important new drugs launched. Right. Now, we have a chart here, and Mike Santoli in Barron's this past weekend talked about the XLV in particular, which is the healthcare spider. I think that's the XLV. Mm -hmm. And that is, that is pretty much close to its 2007 high. I think it might actually be over its 2007 high. Now, we have the situation when it comes to healthcare stocks as demonstrated by the XLV, where um, they, it, those stocks were not punished as badly as the broader market during the great sell-off in 2008, 2009. And though they've come back, they haven't had as much uh, of a run-up. In fact, since year to date, I think healthcare, the XLV is up <coughs> under 7% when the broader market's probably up around 11%. Is that, does that tell us anything other than that healthcare is probably a less risky segment of the market? I think part of what it tells us is that the worries about utilization and cost pressure or price pressures in Europe and the United States that drug makers and device makers are facing hasn't been shaken off. We went through two years in which Americans put off going to the doctor, they put off getting lab tests done, they put off going to the hospital for non-essential surgery because of very real um, worries about unemployment and the economy. And while health insurers did earlier this year hint that they were pricing for an increase in utilization, it hasn't really panned out right. yet, though it's early in the year, and people are still worried about that and very worried about what's going on in Europe. Right. And it's true that, uh, you know, we, we talk about healthcare in general. There are very specific segments. There are the insurers mm -hmm. like uh, UNH, for example, very different business than, say, the medical device manufacturers like very a Stryker different. or Medtronic, which is, in fact, very different from the pharmaceutical companies. And they all probably have a different position when it comes to um, the current or the current law that is being dis discussed in the Supreme Court. Typically speaking, when we are in bull markets, and I think it's fair to say we're in a bullish stock market right now, healthcare stocks are supposed to lag. They're supposed to be defensive stocks. The fact that healthcare stocks are making a good run today, the fact that healthcare stocks have performed very well, are they an indicator that maybe we're moving to a different phase of the bull market right now? Could be, or just could be an indicator that you know there are people out there that are still very nervous, right. and they want a little bit of that that dividend payer. They want some of that defensiveness. Um, right. I mean, the, the thing that puzzles me about the stock market right now is that you have a lot of small and mid-cap stocks. Mm -hmm. A lot of those are biotech companies. Some of them are biotech companies. Those things are trading at very, very frothy PEs because people are betting on some takeover plays from some of the uh, larger pharmaceutical mm -hmm. manufacturers. But generally speaking, healthcare stocks trade at a very low multiple, again, broadly speaking, the large caps. And you have a lot of small and medium cap growth companies that trade at huge multiples. There seems to be a divergence in the market between, say, small cap and mega cap stocks. Do you expect that to continue? Oh, absolutely. Um, large cap pharmaceutical companies are not generating the kind of growth that they did 10, 15 years ago. And even some of the larger biotech companies are very large. And there are, like Amgen, one of the big problems the stock faces is that people are worried about that they've gotten too big to grow. Yes. Um, and then you have a company like Biogen that seems to be easily generating double-digit earnings growth. Um, smaller mid-cap companies that have a pipeline, that have an exciting drug coming out, that can actually get it launched and sell it, that's a big difference. Um, you know, are going to generate, you know, are, they're going to generate the, the frothier PEs because, you know, people, whether you agree with them or not, are willing to pay up for growth often. Right.